Hello info person, this is Anton, and well, looks like, as the title of the video suggests, there seems to be some kind of a super powerful source of cosmic rays right in the middle of the Milky Way, but nobody knows right now what exactly it is. And yeah, it's not the central black hole. And so let's talk about this new discovery in a little bit more detail, but let's actually start with what's happening and what we know so far. And the story here begins in 1912. And here the story starts with Victor Hess, an Austrian-American physicist who back in 1912, by measuring radiation at the sea level compared to the altitude of 5.3 kilometers, completely by accident discovered that something seems to be hitting planet Earth from all over the place. Here's that famous picture of him inside the balloon where he made this discovery. And well, in 1936, he won the Nobel Prize in Physics. He basically discovered cosmic rays, extremely fast-moving particles such as hydrogen, helium, and in some cases, some other atoms, that seem to come from all over the place pretty much at all times, but then by striking the upper atmosphere end up producing what's known as the cosmic ray air shower, which usually results in a cascade of various particles and various high-energy photons, which we then detect as radiation. Fun fact, a lot of my older video games, such as the ones I used on Nintendo DS, have been basically prominently damaged as a result of cosmic rays striking them for approximately 20 years now. As a matter of fact, when it comes to various types of media, and of course computers, damage from cosmic rays is a lot more common than most people think. But that's beside the point. The point is that he discovered cosmic rays, and this was just the start. And today we know that there are so many different sources of these unusual particles, but usually it depends on the energy. Some of the lower energy cosmic rays usually come from the sun. But the vast majority of sources seem to be outside of the solar system and generally seem to come from either various supernova remnants or, more often, very distant supermassive black holes that seem to be shooting those particles at us at all times. We usually refer to these as galactic cosmic rays. And while the majority of them are basically just hydrogen, over the 12% are helium nuclei and a very small part are extremely heavy atoms, usually iron. But in order to achieve these velocities and to basically become so highly energetic, they have to be accelerated by something extremely powerful and very often for a very long time. Here's one of the animations made by NASA that kind of shows us how some of this might work. And so sometimes by traveling through galactic magnetic fields, these particles will actually travel for a very long time before arriving to planet Earth. But in many other cases, we also detect the gamma rays from the original source and thus can deduce where some of these particles are coming from. And here is one of the ways supernova usually produce these. Here basically by crossing the shock wave and by acquiring more and more energy, a lot of these particles reach almost the speed of light, escaping in the process. And so many of these particles actually travel to us for millions of years and do get accelerated over and over by various magnetic fields. But as they travel through some of the interstellar medium, and specifically some of the gas, they also interact with this gas emitting gamma rays, allowing us to track their motion. And the stronger the interaction, or I guess the more energy these particles have, the higher gamma ray energy they produce. And so since once again gamma rays travel in a straight line, we can generally find unusual sources somewhere out there. And in many cases, when there's a source of cosmic rays and some kind of a thick gas cloud nearby, we'll actually usually detect a lot of these very powerful rays coming from this cloud as a result of the interaction. And so these high energy gamma rays reaching the planet end up interacting with the molecules in the upper atmosphere and once again producing a type of a secondary shower. And here, scientists discovered a brilliant technique on how to detect them. It basically involves massive tanks of water that also contain various photodetectors that can actually detect what's known as Cherenkov radiation. When various particles pass through this water, they will basically make water glow just a little bit. This is a result of these particles traveling at a much higher speed than they should be traveling inside water. Here's a famous example from a typical nuclear reactor. And so many of these detectors essentially work in a very similar way, except here we can even trace the gamma rays to exact sources in the night skies. And so detectors like this, High Altitude Water Cherenkov Observatory, are perfect for these detections. But here they specialize in extremely high energy detections. Specifically something we refer to as tevatrons, or Terra Electron Volt Gamma Rays, essentially some of the highest energy gamma rays produced in the Milky Way and technically the universe. But in the last few years, researchers started to discover something else. Pivotrons, or Pata Electron Volt. 
And that's a completely new level, something that we cannot even produce right here on Earth. And in the last few years, approximately 100 sources of these extremely high energy gamma rays have been identified across the night skies. And though most of them are probably distant central black holes, researchers are more interested in things that are inside our galaxy. And although Tevatrons have been discovered in the Milky Way before, it was not until recently that scientists discovered Pivotrons. And in this case, coming from sources we never really expected. For example, a few of them seem to be supernova remnants, a couple seem to be pulsar wind nebula, and some seem to have mysterious sources. But out of approximately 300 known supernova remnants, only a few of them have been discovered to have these super high energies. And one was actually really surprising. This was a discovery of a strange supernova remnant, G106.3 plus 2.7, that seems to be 2600 light years away from us and does contain a really bright pulsar. And here this was definitively confirmed to be a pivotron source that absolutely nobody expected. And so here this was a confirmation that supernova remnants and pulsars seem to indeed be able to produce them, but obviously through techniques or mechanisms we don't understand. But there was a bit of a question. Was there something similar near the center of the galaxy? And specifically, could Sagittarius, a star supermassive black hole, have produced them sometimes in the past? And so that's essentially what the researchers wanted to discover by conducting additional studies. And that's because previous studies have actually suggested that there was a pivotron somewhere within approximately 30 light years from the galactic center. And something that emitted many of these powerful particles for at least a thousand years. But obviously nobody knew what it was or how it was produced. So maybe there was something else besides supernova remnants or besides pulsars located in this region. And well, the point of this study by Albert and his team was to essentially see if there's really anything there or if it was just some kind of a mistaken observation. And so here by using 7 years of data from Hawk, or basically these water tanks, and by analyzing over 100 gamma ray events, all of them containing very high energies, they definitively confirmed that there was indeed something in the center of the galaxy producing ridiculously powerful particles. And specifically producing pivotrons, the highest energy particles possible. And as these pivotrons travel and collide with a lot of gas nearby, they obviously release super powerful gamma rays, which is what we actually observe from the planet. And so they decided to see if they can identify this source or find out what it is. And they focused on some of the most well-known sources in the center. For example, one of them, the Galactic Center Radio Arc, is famous for producing powerful emissions. It's very close to the center and has been previously suggested as a potential source. The other source was obviously Sagittarius A star black hole. The location we expect to produce a lot of energy at all times. But turns out that neither one of these sources explained what was being detected. Even when gamma rays from these two sources were extracted, there was still an unusual overabundance of extremely powerful gamma rays coming from somewhere in this region. And it was from a point-like source they now refer to as Hawk J1746-2856, something that's able to produce pivotrons, but what exactly it is, well, that's where the mystery starts. Because the study basically excludes all known sources, at the moment nobody knows what these ultra-high energy emissions are being produced by. But this study definitively confirms the pivotron source that seems to generate these gamma rays as these extremely powerful cosmic rays interact with dense gas extremely close to the galactic center. And so it's only the next generation experiments and next generation detectors that might be able to pinpoint exactly where this is coming from. For example, the Cherenkov Telescope Array or the Southern Wide Field Gamma Ray Observatory might be able to see this, but we just don't have the data yet. And so in essence, the study definitively confirms there is something ridiculously powerful in the galactic center and it's not the central black hole. Now it could be another supernova remnant or some kind of a ridiculously powerful pulsar nebula, but usually we're able to detect those from really far away. And so right now it's just unknown. A new mystery in the center of the galaxy and something we'll discuss again once there are some additional updates. But as a kind of a side note, you might want to check out the recent explanation about the famous WOW signal, because turns out it might have been formed by an extremely similar phenomenon. So basically some kind of a powerful emitter interacting with nearby clouds. The video about this is in the description. Anyway, on that note, once there are some updates, we'll come back and discuss this again. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, 
or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.